Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Briano, and I have a little video for you guys today. Uh, today we're going to go over different ways of obtaining data from HTTP requests. Uh, we've done some stuff on REST APIs and creating your first REST APIs, but I figured I wanted to go a little bit more in depth into how to get, you know, header parameters, query parameters, and path variables from your HTTP requests and being able to use that inside your Java code. So just getting started. So let's let's start by analyzing this HTTP request, right? So I have a get call, right, to slash users, and then I have some path variable in here. Then I'm also using a query parameter, and there's also a header key and header value here. So this is how the curl call looks, right? So HTTP localhost 88 users. There's no brackets here, obviously. I just put the brackets for. Um, just for purposes of this, but path variable, then you have this query key and query value and header key and header value. So these are all useful things in your HTTP requests that you may be getting in that you may want to use in your, in your spring boot application. Um, so I'm going to kind of go into what are the different ways that we can use these. Um, I'm not going to list every single way, but I'm going to give you guys an idea if you guys need to do the same thing and just before we keep going here i just want to let you guys know if you can um could you just smash that like button down below and give me a subscribe as well as turn the notification bell if you haven't and i'll be making more coding as well as finance related content um anyway getting back into it so let's look at the http requests and what spring annotations we can use to access those http requests so the first one is path variable and that can be found as app path variable and it's to get um, information like this so it'll it'll get you something right out of the URI this is normally used in rest applications and that's how you can get it so let's say maybe you, so this is like the user's endpoint maybe this will be the user ID the next one is is query or request parameters commonly found in like just MVC just web applications but it's also used in rest APIs you know a good thing for what you may pass in here is like a date or something like that right so maybe you have a date that you want to look for in these users I don't know just giving you guys options obviously not how you need to use it and at the end of the day you use it however it makes sense in your application and the last one is just header header keys and header values or header parameters and that's using the spring annotation of at request header you may pass some like authentication stuff here something like that uh, but let's go jump into the code and I'll show you guys some examples of how I'm using all these so the first one we're gonna go into is path variable with path variable I'm gonna go over two examples of how to use it first is just the normal example which we're gonna just hit slash users slash ID um, I've showed this in my other rest video there's nothing really new about this um, this is the most basic way of using this so if I go and curl localhost 8080 slash users slash one uh what is it like it doesn't like something uh -huh. that's why slash path okay and you can see a one gets printed out here easy peasy the next is for some reason if maybe the variable that we're using isn't named id maybe some you know naming convention in your application or something like that where you're not naming it id but you want it to buy id here what you do is you can use um you don't have to put anything in there you don't have to put name uh, but this is basically overriding the name and saying that this name of id should be match to this um, variable the names are already the same you won't need to do it there it'll automatically map it but it's just something good to know if you don't so next thing we're going to go into is request parameter i have a little bit more examples like this but i'm not going to go and hit the api on every single one this is just to kind of show you so your request parameter can be passed at the end kind of how we showed in the powerpoint and i'll just go ahead and um, i'll make it here right so we have some localhost 8080 slash request param and then no path variable here and slash required okay and what params are we going to pass so we're going to pass the name right so let's say the same thing i'm going to call it name and we'll just leave the name as query value so as you can see the name came in as query value and we outputted it right so now what about um, how we can make this an optional by default, just like path variable by default, they're both required. You can set them to not required. 
Um, but there's a few ways to do it with request parameter. The first of which is setting it to required as false. Obviously in this code, if required is false, this won't work. This will give you a null pointer or something of the like. I think, I think spring may give you just a blank one, but either way, continuing by setting a default value, you're giving it as optional because if for some reason it doesn't come in, it'll match to default name and print that out. And then the last one is actually using an optional. When you're using an optional, you don't need to set it to required or give a default value. And basically it'll be present or not. Next thing with using parameters is you can put a list of all parameters. Um, so basically this will give you every single parameter given. So if I hit the slash all params endpoint and I do and I do maybe param three, let me get rid of that space. And I send that, we're gonna see that all three of them came in and they all were mapped out. So this is good if you're taking a lot of parameters for some reason, and you wanna do something with every one or you wanna check every one individually um, without having to map them all in. So this gives you a little bit of a cleaner approach. The downside with this is obviously you can't set a special specific one to required. So if you wanted name to be there every time, you couldn't use this approach. Now the last one is a list params. So this is basically if I take, let me change this to list params. If I change this to ID, um, we can either take ID as a comma separated list and it should work. I see it prints out one, two, three, or we can have multiple IDs and it works in the same way. So either way it'll work, but it'll basically give you a list of IDs and you can, you can use that in your code. And the last one is request header. So for request header, you have the same two kind of principles. You can use it uh, straight as a header calling the name like you did for path variable or request parameter. You can set it to required to true or false. And also you're able to get it as a map of these headers. And for each thing in the map, you can do something with it. So you can check whether it's there. And the last one that you can do with this is you can actually get a HTTP headers object, which I don't have in the code here, but you can get doing it in the same way. You can have an HTTP headers object and you can get the whole header and do whatever you need to do with that. So anyway, guys, that was a super quick video. I wanted to go over how to use path variables, request parameters, and request headers. If you guys have any more questions about this or you want to learn more about creating a REST API, I do have another video on my channel about creating a REST API. And if you guys haven't liked the video or subscribed, can you go ahead and do that? It really helps the channel out. And let me know if you guys want to see videos on something specific, and I'll make that as well. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.